Oh, hey there. Today I thought we could do a lecture on Civil War facts and fun facts. Things that get us rolling so we can move forward. Uh, welcome to the six, six weeks. Okay, let's get started. So, Civil War, I know we've been talking about this a long time. So let's review real quick. Civil Wars between the Northern States, the Union, and the Southern States, the Confederacy, right? So we have the USA versus the CSA. Okay, so what was the first state to leave the Union? What was the first state to secede? Starts with uh, South, South Carolina, right? And if you remember, South Carolina has been waiting 30 years since the nullification crisis. Remember, they threatened to secede then, and then Henry Clay fixed it, and now they're actually going to secede for real. Okay, um, so let's talk about the four causes of the Civil War up front. So, again, this is review. One, states' rights. States like South Carolina feel like they have the right to make their own laws, including laws about slavery, and they don't think that the um, United States government should be telling them what to do. We talked about this, we've been talking about this since the seven principles of the Constitution, This, uh, you know, in, in various court cases, and in situations like this, the issue of federalism keeps coming up. Remember that word federalism means um, balancing power between national and state government. Well, South Carolina feels like they have the right to make their own choices and they don't want to be told what to do. Um, so try to look at it from both points of view. Uh, just so you can understand why they did it. Uh, next would be slavery. Uh, that's self-explanatory. We've been talking about that for a while. N another cause would be the election of Lincoln. They see uh, Lincoln um, being elected as president. He, they, they see um, this whole situation as a negative thing. Um, they think that Lincoln's going to take slaves away. They think that Lincoln's going to control them. Um, if you followed Lincoln on his campaign trail, his speeches that he gave he actually said, I'm not planning on ending slavery, I'm planning on halting the expansion of slavery. I want to contain it. But they saw him as a usurper, and they saw him as someone who would come in and be tyrannical. That was their point of view. Uh, we also have um, sectionalism. So that would be um, uh, the three sections, the northern section, the southern section, and the western section. We talked about that enough. I think you understand the difference, so let's move forward. Okay, cool. So who can tell me? What's the first battle of the Civil War, and where did it take place? Battle of Fort Sumter, right. It took place off the coast of South Carolina. So let's talk really quickly. Um, when South Carolina seceded, they thought that all of the land in South Carolina, including all the Union forts that were, had been built in South Carolina, they felt now belonged to them. The United States, or the Union, does not agree with that. Um, so this. Fort, Fort Sumter off the coast of South Carolina yeah, is flying an American flag and they're saying, hey, this is United States built, so you can't have it in South Carolina and the rest of the, you know, well, that's the rest of the Confederacy says, hey, this belongs to us. And so there's a fight. And so the Confederates um, bombard uh, the fort with cannons until the Union troops surrender and they give up the fort. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, beginning of this war. Let's talk about the difference between the North and the South as far as um, who's fighting who. So we have, right, so 24 Union states versus 11 Confederate states. So there are already more than twice as many Union states as Confederate. Let's talk about population. That's what really matters. So in the Union, you have 22 million people. And in the uh, Confederate states, you have about 9 million. And don't forget, a third of those 9 million are going to be slaves. So you're going to see the difference in numbers between the Union and the Confederacy. So in short, the Union has the advantage when it comes to population. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's talk about border states for a minute, okay? What is a border state? That's right. It's any state on the border between the Union and the Confederacy. But what makes them special is that these border states are slave states that have not seceded. Now, uh, we're talking about Delaware, West Virginia, which will come later, Maryland, Missouri, and Kentucky. Right. So those are your five border states. Um, we need to make sure you know that for the quiz this week. Uh, so, again, these are states that kept slavery going but chose not to join the Confederacy. That's what makes them unique. 
So during the war, anytime Lincoln issues any kind of, like the Emancipation Proclamation he's going to issue, that's not going to free slaves in those border states. It's only going to attempt to free slaves in the rebellious Confederate states. A lot of people don't realize that the Emancipation Proclamation is not freeing slaves in border states. So states that are loyal to the Union, they aren't having their slaves freed from the Emancipation Proclamation. That's important. Cool. So now let's talk about people. Let's start with the Union. Um, President of the United States, we know in 1860, Lincoln is elected. Uh, let's talk about uh, generals. So there were a slew of officers that came through the leadership of the United States Army. Uh, a lot of them were failures. Uh, Ambrose Burnside was a big failure at um, the Battle of uh, Fredericksburg. And so you have all of these failed generals. You know, one of the advantages the Confederates had over the Union was that the Confederates had the uh, more skilled military leaders as far as strategy goes. And so what you're seeing in the first you, uh, few years of the war is you're seeing the Union generals failing, like I mentioned Burnside. Uh, Lincoln eventually settles on Ulysses S. Grant, and he's going to be um, at Vicksburg, and he's going to uh, uh, coordinate a siege and Vicksburg is going to be one of the turning points of the war. They're going to gain access to the Mississippi River. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Ulysses S. Grant is extremely successful when he's put in that leadership role by Lincoln. You also have um, William uh, to come to Sherman, and Sherman uh, and Sherman comes up with the strategy known as the March to the Sea, where he marches his troops from Atlanta to Savannah and burns everything, something called total war. It's a strategy the Union uh, desperately accepts towards the end of the war just to end the thing. Uh, so the two big generals for the Union we'll talk about is Ulysses S. Grant and William Tecumseh Sherman. Notice his middle name is named after the Native American warrior Tecumseh. Um, and also the tank used in World War II from the American side, the Allies, uh, is the Sherman tank named after this um, Civil War general. Let's talk about the Confederates. So um, Jefferson Davis is going to be elected, like we talked about, the uh, is going to be elected president of the CSA. Uh, and everyone who knows anything about military history knows that Robert E. Lee is going to be given uh, the role of um, the command of the Army of Virginia, and he's going to be in control of basically the Confederate forces. Uh, Robert E. Lee was a uh, hero of the Mexican, and the Confederates are going to have the edge when it comes to military leadership. Um, some other Confederate military officers would be uh, Stonewall Jackson. He's going to be uh, successful at uh, Battle of Bull Run. He's going to be extremely successful at the Battle of Chancellorsville. Um, James Longstreet's another officer, Beauregard. So you throw all these people together, you realize uh, you stack the Confederate officers against the Union officers and the Confederates definitely have an advantage there. Um, let's talk about a uh, different group of people. Let's talk about minorities in the Civil War. So I want to talk about William Carney for a minute. So William Carney was a slave and he is no, is no longer a slave now, and he joins up with um, a infantry unit called the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Unit. And this infantry unit is made up of all black soldiers. And um, at the time, if you were African American, you could not serve in the same unit as white soldiers, even in the North. So they had their own units and the 54th Massachusetts was the most famous. Um, William Carney uh, uh, was involved in this battle called the Battle of Fort Wagner where they were given orders to basically uh, attack this fort and they, it was a hopeless mission and they uh, performed their uh, task anyway and a lot of them died and uh, the Confederates defending the fort had so much respect for the bravery of these um, gentlemen that, um, as history books report, the Confederates were cheering 
and uh, showing them a sign of respect for their bravery after the battle was over. Uh, okay, let's talk about somebody else. Let's talk about Philip Bazaar, a Chilean officer in the Union um, naval guy. Uh, he won the Medal of Honor, and uh, also William Carney won the Medal of Honor. I forgot to mention that a minute ago. So both these minorities both won the most prestigious medal um, an American soldier can win. Uh, Julia Ward Howe is a woman that um, wrote a song called The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Uh, she contributed to the spirit of the Union, and uh, I just want to talk about some people who weren't, you know, your typical soldier, and I thought we could, you know, I could show you that these three people. So we have William Carney, Philip Bazaar, Julia Ward Howe, those three people. Um, they'll, they'll all three be on the quiz, so heads up. Um, let's talk about one last thing today. Let's talk about strategies at both sides, okay? It's just so we can understand how they're both approaching this conflict. Okay, let's start with the Southern strategy. So the Confederates know that they're outnumbered and they're outgunned and they're out technology, et cetera. So they have a simple strategy, play defense, okay? So just as long as we can keep the Union out of the Confederacy and as long as we can keep making them spend money and spend men and spend time, maybe we can wear them down to where eventually they'll just say, you know what, you guys wanna walk you can walk and have your own country, fine. So that's their, that's what they're hoping on. Uh, the Northern strategy is a little more, uh, has a, is a little more complicated. The Northern strategy is called the Anaconda Plan. Now, if you know anything about an anaconda, you know it's the largest python style snake, um, constricting snake, and uh, you know they can reach up to 50 feet long. And so um, and when an anaconda um, finds its prey, it um, attacks it and then it wraps its body around it and it suffocates it and then it swallows it whole. And so that's why it's called the Anaconda Plan. Their whole, their whole strategy is to basically surround the, Union, the, the Confederacy, excuse me, surround the Confederacy and strangle them, cut off their supplies, cut off their will to fight. Um, they're also trying to, when they can take the Mississippi River, which they do at the Battle of Vicksburg, when they can take control of that whole river, what they can do is they can um, split the Confederacy into two sides, an eastern and a western side, and that will mess with their supply lines as well. So these strategies is kind of what Abraham Lincoln is cooking up with his um, you know, inner circle, and that's what they're trying to do to win. So the to recap, the Confederates are just trying to play defense and to hold their ground, which is the easier job, and the Union is trying to come in and take the Mississippi River, you know, and they're trying to surround the Confederacy and, um, you know, put them in a stranglehold and so they'll surrender. Okay, so those are kinds of the things that I want to talk about. Um, we, we talked about different people, strategies, uh, the first battle of the war. Um, you know, just to end this whole conversation, I think we should just kind of talk about advantages of the North and South. Just recap on some of that I've already taught. So Southern advantages. Okay, this will be on the quiz. Southern advantages. Better military officers. I mean, you could argue Grant was, and Sherman were, were really great too, but for the most part, most of the West Point had uh, most of the, the most talented West Point graduates, many of them joined the Confederacy. Um, don't forget about the Virginia Military Institute that was also putting out good officers. So you have this, you know, that's one advantage that the South has. Another advantage was that um, they're fighting most of these battles in the South, so they have the home field advantage, which, you know, you know where the rivers are, you know where the forests are, you know where the shortcuts are, you know, you know your turf. So when you get to do home field advantage, you have, you, you know, you know where everything is. Um, and of course, they, they feel like they're fighting for their their right to have states rights that you know you can argue that's not a good reason but that's their whole thing they're all jazzed up about hey we deserve not to be treated like peasants you know that's how they feel i don't think everybody agrees with that but that's how a lot of confederates feel they don't want to be told what to do by the united states government okay let's talk about the union advantages okay they have a higher population, we covered that earlier. 
Uh, they have access to factories so they can build anything they want. They can manufacture guns and bullets and you know unlimited supply of everything. They can just manufacture things. And a third one would be uh, this new invention called the steam locomotive uh, railroad. And so they can transport supplies and troops on the fly like that. Most of the railroads are gonna be in the north and very few railroads are going to be in the south. So that puts an advantage for the union. So, okay, that wraps everything up. I appreciate you guys listening and uh, taking notes. Uh, look for the flip grid I'm going to post and that'll give you some more instructions. sure that you take my quiz. I hope everybody's uh, feeling good and staying safe. Thanks.